A realized one exists after death. A realized one doesn't exist after death. A realized one both exists and doesn't exist after death. A realized one neither exists nor doesn't exist after death. This is the only truth, anything else is wrong. This too has not been declared by me. Why haven't these things been declared by the Buddha? Because they're not beneficial or relevant to the fundamentals of the spiritual life. They don't lead to disillusionment, dispassion, cessation, peace, insight, awakening, and extinguishment. That's why I haven't declared them. Then what has been declared by the Buddha? I have declared this, this is suffering. This is the origin of suffering. This is the cessation of suffering. This is the practice that leads to the cessation of suffering. Why have these things been declared by the Buddha? Because they are beneficial and relevant to the fundamentals of the spiritual life. They lead to disillusionment, dispassion, cessation, peace, insight, awakening, and extinguishment. That's why I have declared them. That's so true, blessed one. That's so true, holy one. Please, sir, go at your convenience. Then the Buddha got up from his seat and left. Soon after the Buddha left, those wanderers gave Pathapada a comprehensive tongue lashing, no matter what the ascetic Gotama says. Pathapada agrees with him, that's so true, blessed one. That's so true, holy one. We understand that the ascetic Gotama didn't make any definitive statement at all regarding whether the cosmos is eternal and so on. When they said this, Pathapada said to them, I too understand that the ascetic Gotama didn't make any definitive statement at all regarding whether the cosmos is eternal and so on. Nevertheless, the practice that he describes is true, real, and accurate. It is the regularity of natural principles, the invariance of natural principles. So how could a sensible person such as I not agree that what was well spoken by the ascetic Gotama was in fact well spoken? Two on Siddha Hathisariputta then after two or three days had passed, Siddha Hathisariputta and Pathapada went to see the Buddha. Siddha Hathisariputta bowed and sat down to one side. But the wanderer Pathapada exchanged greetings with the Buddha, and when the greetings and polite conversation were over, he sat down to one side. Pathapada told the Buddha what had happened after he left. The Buddha said, All those wanderers, Pathapada, are blind and sightless. You are the only one who sees. For I have taught and pointed out both things that are definitive and things that are not definitive. And what things have I taught and pointed out that are not definitive? The cosmos is eternal. The cosmos is not eternal. The cosmos is finite. The cosmos is infinite. The soul is the same thing as the body. The soul and the body are different things. A realized one exists after death. A realized one doesn't exist after death. A realized one both exists and doesn't exist after death. A realized one neither exists nor doesn't exist after death. And why haven't I taught and pointed out such things that are not definitive? Because those things aren't beneficial or relevant to the fundamentals of the spiritual life. They don't lead to disillusionment, dispassion, cessation, peace, insight, awakening, and extinguishment. That's why I haven't taught and pointed them out. 2.1 Things that are definitive and what things have I taught and pointed out that are definitive? This is suffering. This is the origin of suffering. This is the cessation of suffering. This is the practice that leads to the cessation of suffering. And why have I taught and pointed out such things that are definitive? Because they are beneficial and relevant to the fundamentals of the spiritual life. They lead to disillusionment, dispassion, cessation, peace, insight, awakening, and extinguishment. That's why I have taught and pointed them out. There are some ascetics and Brahmins who have this doctrine and view, the self is exclusively happy and is sound after death. I go up to them and say, is it really true that this is the Venerable's view? And they answer, yes. I say to them, 
but do you meditate knowing and seeing an exclusively happy world? Ask this, they say, no. I say to them, but have you perceived an exclusively happy self for a single day or night, or even half a day or night? Ask this, they say, no. I say to them, but do you know a path and a practice to realize an exclusively happy world? Ask this, they say, no. I say to them, but have you ever heard the voice of the deities reborn in an exclusively happy world saying, practice well, dear sirs, practice directly so as to realize an exclusively happy world. For this is how we practiced, and we were reborn in an exclusively happy world. Ask this, they say, no. What do you think, Pathapada? This being so, doesn't what they say turn out to have no demonstrable basis? Clearly that's the case, sir. Suppose, Pathapada, a man were to say, whoever the finest lady in the land is, it is her that I want, her that I desire. They'd say to him, Mr., that finest lady in the land who you desire, do you? Know whether she's an aristocrat, a Brahmin, a merchant, or a worker? Ask this, he'd say, no they'd say to him, Mr., that finest lady in the land who you desire, do you know her name or clan? Whether she's tall or short or medium? Whether her skin is black, brown, or tawny? What village, town, or city she comes from? Ask this, he'd say, no they'd say to him, Mr., do you desire someone who you've never even known or seen? Ask this, he'd say, yes. What do you think, Pathapada? This being so, doesn't that man's statement turn out to have no demonstrable basis? Clearly that's the case, sir. In the same way, the ascetics and Brahmins who have those various doctrines and views. Doesn't what they say turn out to have no demonstrable basis? Clearly that's the case, sir. Suppose a man was to build a ladder at the crossroads for climbing up to a stilt longhouse. They'd say to him, Mr., that stilt longhouse that you're building a ladder for, do you know whether it's to the north, south, east, or west? Or whether it's tall or short or medium? Ask this, he'd say, no they'd say to him, Mr., are you building a ladder for a longhouse that you've never even known or seen? Ask this, he'd say, yes. What do you think, Pathapada? This being so, doesn't that man's statement turn out to have no demonstrable basis? Clearly that's the case, sir. In the same way, the ascetics and Brahmins who have those various doctrines and views. Doesn't what they say turn out to have no demonstrable basis? Clearly that's the case, sir. 2.23 Kinds of Reincarnation Pathapada, there are these three kinds of reincarnation, a substantial reincarnation, a mind-made reincarnation, and a non-physical reincarnation. And what is a substantial reincarnation? It is physical, made up of the four primary elements, and consumes solid food. What is a mind-made reincarnation? It is physical, mind-made, complete in all its various parts, not deficient in any faculty. What is a non-physical reincarnation? It is non-physical, made of perception. I teach the Dhamma for the giving up of these three kinds of reincarnation, when you practice accordingly, corrupting qualities will be given up in you and cleansing qualities will grow. You'll enter and remain in the fullness and abundance of wisdom, having realized it with your own insight in this very life. Pathapada, you might think, corrupting qualities will be given up and cleansing qualities will grow. One will enter and remain in the fullness and abundance of wisdom, having realized it with one's own insight in this very life. But such a life is suffering. But you should not see. It like this. Corrupting qualities will be given up and cleansing qualities will grow. One will enter and remain in the fullness and abundance of wisdom, having realized it with one's own insight in this very life. And there will be only joy and happiness, tranquility, mindfulness, and awareness. Such a life is blissful. If others should ask us, but reverends, what is that substantial reincarnation? 
We answer like this, this is that substantial reincarnation. If others should ask us, but reverends, what is that mind-made reincarnation? We'd answer like this, this is that mind-made reincarnation. If others should ask us, but reverends, what is that non-physical reincarnation? We'd answer like this, this is that non-physical reincarnation. What do you think, Pathapada? This being so, doesn't that statement turn out to have a demonstrable basis? Clearly that's the case, sir. Suppose a man were to build a ladder for climbing up to a stilled longhouse right underneath that longhouse. They'd say to him, Mr., that stilled longhouse that you're building a ladder for, do you know whether it's to the north, south, east, or west? Or whether it's tall or short or medium? He'd say, this is that stilled longhouse for which I'm building a ladder, right underneath it. What do you think, Pothapada? This being so, doesn't that man's statement turn out to have a demonstrable basis? Clearly that's the case, sir. When the Buddha had spoken, Siddha Hathisariputta said, Sir, while in a substantial reincarnation, are the mind made and non-physical. Reincarnations fictitious, and only the substantial reincarnation real? While in a mind made reincarnation, are the substantial and non-physical. Reincarnations fictitious, and only the mind made reincarnation real? While in a non-physical reincarnation, are the substantial and mind made reincarnations fictitious, and only the non physical reincarnation real. While in a substantial reincarnation, it's not referred to as a mind made or non physical reincarnation, only as a substantial reincarnation. While in a mind made reincarnation, it's not referred to as a substantial or non physical reincarnation, only as a mind made reincarnation. While in a non physical reincarnation, it's not referred to as a substantial or mind-made reincarnation, only as a non-physical reincarnation. Siddha, suppose they were to ask you, did you exist in the past? Will you exist in the future? Do you exist now? How would you answer? Sir, if they were to ask me this, I'd answer like this, I existed in the past. I will exist in the future. I exist now. That's how I'd answer. But Siddha, suppose they were to ask you, is the reincarnation you had in the past your only real one, and those of the future and present fictitious? Is the reincarnation you will have in the future your only real one, and those of the past and present? Fictitious. Is the reincarnation you have now your only real one, and those of the past and future fictitious? How would you answer? Sir, if they were to ask me this, I'd answer like this, the reincarnation I had in the past was real at that time, and those of the future and present fictitious. The reincarnation I will have in the future will be real at the time, and those of the past and present fictitious. The reincarnation I have now is real at this time, and those of the past and future fictitious. That's how I'd answer. In the same way, while in any one of the three reincarnations, it's not referred to as the other two, only under its own name. From a cow comes milk, from milk comes curds, from curds come butter, from butter comes ghee, and from ghee comes cream of ghee. And the cream of ghee is said to be the best of these. While it's milk, it's not referred to as curds, butter, ghee, or cream of ghee. It's only referred to as milk. While it's curd or butter or ghee or cream of ghee, it's not referred to as anything else, only under its own name. In the same way, while in any one of the three reincarnations, it's not referred to as the other two, only under its own name. These are the world's usages, terms, expressions, and descriptions, which the realized one uses without misapprehending them. When he had spoken, the wanderer Pathapada said to the Buddha, Excellent, sir. Excellent. As if he were writing the overturned, or revealing the hidden, or pointing out the path to the lost, or lighting a lamp in the dark so people with good eyes can see what's there, so too the Buddha has made the teaching clear in many ways. I go for refuge to the Buddha, to the teaching, and to the mendicant Sangha. From this day forth, 
may the Buddha remember me as a lay follower who has gone for refuge for life. 2.3 The ordination of Siddhahat Thizariputta But Siddhahat Thizariputta said to the Buddha, Excellent, sir. Excellent. As if he were writing the overturned, or revealing the hidden, or pointing out the path to the lost, or lighting a lamp in the dark. So people with good eyes can see what's there, so too the Buddha has made the teaching clear in many ways. I go for refuge to the Buddha, to the teaching, and to the mendicant Sangha. Sir, may I receive the going forth, the ordination in the Buddha's presence. And Siddhahat Thizariputta received the going forth, the ordination in the Buddha's presence. Not long after his ordination, Venerable Siddhahat Thizariputta, living alone, withdrawn, diligent, keen, and resolute, soon realized the supreme end of the spiritual path in this very life. He lived having achieved with his own insight the goal for which gentlemen rightly go forth from the lay life to homelessness. He understood, rebirth is ended, the spiritual journey has been completed, what had to be done has been done, there is no return to any state of existence. And Venerable Siddhahat Thizariputta became one of the perfected. NDN0